this is Jack Lipton speaking, and t- today I'm I'm speaking with Troy Beaujolais, of the CEO of Murchison Minerals. And Murchison has made some uh, news today uh, by announcing uh, new results at their property in Quebec for actually EV metals. Let, let, let's be realistic. They, uh, I I want uh, Mr. Beaujolais to, to speak about it, but I'm I'm going to say to you that. These are among the most important critical metals in in our society. And we need to produce as much as we can in North America. And I think the HPM deposits being looked at by Murchison are going to be a very important component of that. And now uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Beaujolais what he thinks about what I just said and to tell us about what's going on with Murchison. First of all, Jack, thank you very much for having me. Um, It's great to be here and be speaking with you today. You know, I I couldn't agree with you more uh, on, you know, I I think the the commodities we're looking at, uh, nickel, copper, cobalt, um, are on critical minerals lists across North America, in Canada, and in the United States. And and there's a big reason for that. Um, And it's, you know, as as the world transitions, um, from a policy perspective, uh, you know, industry, corporately, uh, commercially, um, across to a, a new energy economy, the need for nickel, copper, cobalt um, is, is going to be pivotal uh, in order to make that transition. And furthermore, you know, the need for, you need for, need for those commodities to be sourced from stable um, uh sovereign jurisdictions, uh, very favorable jurisdictions. Uh, the HPM project is located in Quebec. Quebec is one of the best mining jurisdictions um, globally. Uh, they really do um, a significant amount to facilitate and support um, early stage exploration um, right through uh, the development process and into production. And, and so from a, from a jurisdictional standpoint, um, HPM is right there. It's just on the North shore of the St. Lawrence uh, River, um, you know, right along in an area that has significant infrastructure, um, and, and that is rail infrastructure and hydroelectric infrastructure. And that leads me into the next point is that, you know, looking at sources of these metals um, that can be uh, extracted, discovered, extracted, uh, produced, and reclaimed in a very sustainable way. Um, with a, you know, in line with the expectations of the end users. In, in North America, we, we don't talk about cobalt because, we're, we're, because in the U.S., for example, we're producing just a trivial amount, 400 tons a year. Canada right now already is producing nearly 4,000 tons a year of cobalt. And that is, that is very significant for, for the, as the Chinese say, new electric vehicle industry, or we say the EV industry. So I... I want to note that Canada is the only country I'm aware of in in this hemisphere that actually has existing cobalt processing uh, capacity, where where the material can be taken from the ore and processed into material for, for batteries. So I think that we need to understand how much more cobalt could be produced in Canada. And I, I'd like to know a little bit more about your, your results and, and your HPM property. Like what, what grades are you seeing? And by the way, I need to add for the, for the viewer that cobalt is not produced as a primary product any, almost anywhere. It, it is a byproduct of copper and or nickel uh, mining. And the, that's the interest. So I, that's my lead into your discussion of, of what you're seeing at HPM in terms of uh, metal content of mineralogy. Yeah. So uh, thanks for that, Jack. Because we'll, we'll back up a bit here. What we were discussing in the in the start is really, you know, the macroeconomic around uh, macroeconomics around uh, Murchison and what we're doing at HPM um, and, and the commodities that were of interest. Now you drill down on the project itself. And uh, it's in the Manicouagan region, um, just east, 
of the uh, Manicouagan impact structure, Lake Manicouagan um, in Quebec on the North Shore of the St. Lawrence. Now, it, from a geologic setting perspective, it, it's in a very favorable geologic setting. Um, you have differentiated mafic intrusives that have uh, intruded into a paranite sequence that are loaded with sulfur. Now, not to get too in, in depth or in detail on that aspect of it, but just for a, from, a, from a camp scale perspective, all of the foundational building blocks are there uh, to have a significant endowment of uh, nickel sulfide deposits in the area. And that, that's what drew, that's what drew uh, Murchison into the area and that's what's keeping us in the area. Now you build on that and you start to look at some of the results that we've had to date. And, and it's really building up the, that foundational um, systematic process of exploration. And it starts with the, the airborne EM or the VTEM surveys that we've flown uh, that have identified a significant number of uh, conductors and, and significant length of conductors. Um, and, and then you build on that and we got on the ground and we tested those conductors with a beat map uh, and, uh, and a backpack drill. So some, some very foundational um, kind of practical uh, prospecting that, that worked very well. Um, and then following up on that, uh, we moved into our inaugural drill program uh, this fall. And so we had our maiden drill program at PYC. PYC is one of the targets. It is one of the targets at HPM at the, at the project. Um, and we had a drill program this fall where we completed eight drill holes. Um, of those eight drill holes, all eight were mineralized. Uh, the mineralization we're seeing to date, um, it ranges from, you know, meter scale, uh, semi-massive to massive solvides uh, to uh, net breccia and brecciated textures right through and in a broader area of uh, disseminated sulfides. So the PYC target itself is a two kilometer long, so 1.95 kilometer long uh, EM anomaly uh, that has been demonstrated to have sulfide mineralization along the strike of it from the prospecting that we did. And the drill program that we're just coming off of uh, tested about 500 meters of that strike length. So the, the, that anomaly remains open at depth on strike um, in, in really all directions. And we're really just starting to scratch the surface. Well, I guess the uh, investors are, are uh, understanding that this, this is significant because I note that your stock has gone up dramatically in the, in the last three months. Yeah, it, it has. It's performed very nicely. And I think off a, off a couple of catalysts, um, uh, you know, early in, early in October, um, Murchison made the decision to um, in increase the size of the team, increase the team. And I, I came on at that point in time. Uh, following that, we, uh, we finalized a $4 million private placement. Um, and importantly, during that private placement, a, a couple things happened there. One of them is that um, uh, we brought on a strategic investor uh, in Michael Gentile, uh, who came in at just under 10%. Um, also, uh, during that private placement, Don Johnson, who uh, is a director of the company um, and, and our largest shareholder, he maintained his 30% interest in the company. And I also had an opportunity to participate um, in that placement and really align myself with merchants and shareholders. And then following that, we went into our, the use of proceeds from that financing, uh, supported the, the program, the drill program at PYC that we've just finished. And just, um, just yesterday, uh, we were able to uh, announce it as a result of all of the work we've done at HPM to date, um, and building up our understanding and then the results of the drill program at UIC, uh, we quadrupled our land package. So we went from 139 square kilometers to now having um, over 580 uh, square kilometers uh, of mineral tenements in the HPM, HPM area, which when you look at the, um, when you look at the regional geology, uh, the gravity, the magnetics, the signature, and, and understand the geology, we really have a very strategic and dominant land position in the entire plateau that we feel um, is very underexplored and in turn has a significant amount of potential to host nickel bearing sulfide mineralization. Uh, thank you, thank you for all that information, and we're we're going to be following you, and I hope to talk to talk to you again, be, because I, I think I really think you're onto something. Thank you again, uh, Troy. Thank you, thank you, Jack. Appreciate it.